Hello everyone, I have some more satellite imagery for you to look at here. These images which you can see were shared by Mark Krutov on Twitter. I have two sets of satellite imagery to show you, both of which show the construction of Russian bases or camps. The first one is near Voronezh in Russia, and then the next one is the construction of one just east of Kursk. The Voronezh one is close to the place where they gathered supplies and troops amassed prior to the initial invasion of February last year, so it could be a sign that there's going to be another push from this route. I'll look at where both camps are at the end of the video and see where a potential push from these two bases to Ukraine would aim at. This first one is at the Poganov training area. So let's take a look at the satellite imagery. The first image from January the 25th, this is near Voronezh by the way, shows the camp as it was after the initial invasion. So pretty much abandoned. Only really the earthworks and that sort of thing remaining. No real structures of any note. January 30 is when we see activity at the base, so they got on with this pretty quickly, moving equipment into the base and re-establishing it in a few days. On February 1st, we can see that construction has continued and more supplies and equipment have been sent here. Finally, images from February 7th, we can see that this site is now full, with equipment, tents and temporary structures set up. Now the images unfortunately a bit too unclear for me to tell what exactly is here, but it's clearly become a substantial storage site, so I hope this area has been monitored closely. Here on this map we can see its location in relation to Ukraine, so it's about 170 kilometers from the border. This is out of range of the Toch Kyu, but it is within range of a 2141 drone, the same type of drone which struck Engels Air Base and other air bases. And I would say this is definitely a worthy target of a 2141. This site was used last year, where it was elements of the 1st Guards tank army who were deployed at this base. Also around this area, at other bases, self-propelled howitzers and MLRS launchers were also deployed. Forces from this region pushed towards Chernihiv and Kyiv and suffered heavy losses. Elements of the forces around here were also involved in the Kharkiv offensive. Given its location, I would say this is very likely intended to support a renewed offensive towards Kharkiv. It could, if a push towards Kharkiv isn't on the cards, also be used to support operations in the northeast, so around Kremina, where a new offensive has been launched in the past week or so, with the intention of pushing Ukraine back from the edges of the city. We also can't rule out this being used to support a push east towards Kyiv. As mentioned, in 2022, this site was home for the 1st Guards Tank Army, which did push towards Kyiv and was involved in the battles around there and suffered huge, huge losses. But it all depends on what Russia's plans are. It could be that this is just purely to support offensives around Kremlin and in the north or that sort of thing, or it could be indication that there is a new offensive going to be pushing towards Kharkiv and Kyiv coming very soon. I'd say it's definitely a development to keep an eye on. It's clearly been built for some purpose in the north and I think this is strongly hinting at a renewed push towards Kharkiv as being the most likely. So I hope I can do a sequel to this location soon after it gets a visit from a 2141 drone. Now let's take a look at the second position I have for you. This one is from Kursk just east of the city. I'll look at later in the video where exactly it is. So the first image is from before the January the 28th and this shows that this area is devoid of activity. There was a camp there back in 2022 but little remains of it now. Now as we creep towards February the 7th we can see construction of a fairly substantial camp. This camp back in 2022 previously contained elements of the 6th Combined Arms Army. The 6th Combined Arms Army took part in the Northern Ukraine offensive around Kharkiv. This camp has now been speculated to contain mobilised conscripts now. This camp is located here, south of a town called Postoyalya Dvore, which is east of Kursk. On this Google map image, we can also make out the remains of the older camps and other training grounds in this region. Now, I don't have satellite images of the other areas here, 
but I strongly suspect that these two have also been rebuilt. This, as you can see here, is close to 112 kilometers from the border. So again, it's well within range of a 2141 drone that Ukraine's been using, and this one is also within range of Touch Kyiv. Now, we haven't seen any Touch Kyiv videos or strikes for a while, so it's unknown if Ukraine actually has any remaining or if they are saving them for special important targets. And I would say these camps in this region are very important targets. The construction of these camps quite close to the border though really shows the need to supply Ukraine with long range platforms and, more importantly, give permission for Ukraine to use them to hit targets within Russia. It's baffling to me that these camps and bases can be built, clearly prepping for another offensive, yet there's a flat out refusal to supply weapons like Attackums which could hit these bases hard and nip any potential new offensive in the north in the bud possibly before it even begins. So a build up of conscripts here near Kursk looks like it's leading to a renewed push either towards Kharkiv directly south or again an attempt to take Kiev. So this is another area which definitely needs keeping an eye on. I would be interested to know if the other abandoned camps from last year which we can see on the Google Maps image are also being repaired and rebuilt. If so, it would be a stronger hint that we will soon be seeing a renewed offensive sometime soon, most likely at the end of February. The end of February is the date which most military experts and governments have said as a date for a renewed offensive, and most sources, including the British intelligence, seem to agree that it will happen, and that Kyiv is very likely the target. So is Kyiv in danger? It's tricky. Russia is clearly determined to salvage some success from this shambles, but they failed to take Kyiv last time when Ukraine was under arm. Since then, Ukraine has received massive shipments of weapons from NATO, armoured fighting vehicles, anti-tank missiles such as brimstone, manpads, SAM systems, artillery pieces such as Panzer Haubitzer and M777s. Russia has, also in the past year, lost huge amounts of vehicles and manpower, but then Ukraine has also suffered heavy losses. The SAM systems that have been donated could be the deciding factor. Russia failed to establish air superiority last time. This time, there are systems like the Avenger, Hawk, Iris T, Gepard and more. And I truly think, if Russia can't establish air superiority, then any attempt to capture Kyiv will fail. Well, that isn't a guarantee. We've seen in Bakhmut and Vuladar that Russia has no qualms at all about throwing countless um, vehicles and countless men needlessly into the city just to basically overwhelm it with sheer numbers. That's what we could see in Kyiv. Huge, huge losses by Russia, but just attempts to overwhelm the city by sheer numbers. So that's it for this video. If you found it interesting, please click like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Thanks again and take care, everybody.